your blood sugar levels is the best blood predictor of longevity, just based on, mm. you know, looking at thousands of people's longevity. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's thought that it's not just a, a clock of aging, but it also controls aging. And that's why the drug metformin is used by a lot of people, myself included, to keep blood sugar levels under control. Mm. How do you use it and how often? Uh, well, I've only been trying it for about two or three years. And it really came from work from out, out of uh, nearby Barzilai's lab mm-hmm. uh, and some other papers that studied more than 100,000 people now. And it turns out that diabetics, type 2 diabetics who take metformin, are less prone to disease than people who are not diabetic and don't take metformin. Wow. So what that says is that it's likely to be an anti-aging medicine Mm. And you can see actually the risk of heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's and frailty goes down after taking metformin. And so I was convinced by the data, the risk is fairly low. You want to consult a doctor because it is a medicine, at least in this country um, and in the English speaking world. Uh, but it's very safe and very cheap relatively. Mm. Um, and so I decided to take it. And I think it's improved my overall health as a result. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like a Probably the reason has to do with suppressing insulin and IGF-1 and also uh, inhibiting mTOR because that's also like one of the longevity pathways. So uh, what, what can you tell us about mTOR and aging? Yes, yeah, so mTOR is the third one that I haven't talked about. There are only three main pathways and they all talk to each other, right? So mm-hmm. scientists will argue whose pathway is more important. <laughs> um, it's really silly because they're all talking to each other. Right. mTOR is a really important one. Um, that's controlled by sirtuins, it's controlled by um, metformin, as you said. What also controls mTOR is how much, how much meat foods you're eating. And there are certain amino acids that are more impactful than others. So branched chain amino acids, uh, these would be um, lysine, oh, sorry, leucine, isoleucine, for example. These are heavily concentrated in meat. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one reason I don't eat steak every night. I try to eat more right. plant-based foods. Right. So low amino acids will act, uh, inhibit TOR, and TOR inhibition has been shown in animals and also in humans to have anti-aging effects. And it's actually the strongest way to extend lifespan in mice. Mm. And so for that reason, some people are trying rapamycin, which is a drug that in- inhibits the immune system typically. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't do that because I, I think it's, it's got some toxic side effects that I'm not willing to take the risk. But there are some new molecules that are like rap, rapamycin. They call rapamycin. We don't think will have the side effects, and those are really promising. But they're in clinical development still. Okay. Yeah, that, that's mTOR is yeah like pretty important. It like regulates cell growth, and uh, there are studies showing that too much mTOR accelerates aging and uh, promotes cancer growth and so on. But at the same time, like too little mTOR is also somewhat bad because it can lead to like sarcopenia and uh, muscle wasting. So how do you find this sort of a sweet spot between uh, okay. getting like sufficient amounts of mTOR but uh, not too much? Yeah, yeah. So as I as I tweeted out last night in response to a new study that says meat is fine to eat. <laughs> Uh, what I said was, uh, the media goes back and forth. Every study, it's extreme. Don't eat meat, eat right. meat, don't eat meat, eat meat. The truth is that it's more about when you eat than what you eat. And so watch how much you eat uh, and mix it up. Don't eat too much of any one thing. Don't yeah. eat all fat. Don't eat all steak every night, <laughs> in my view. And more importantly, don't eat all the time. Uh, and actually, there are mouse studies that show that if you mix different ratios of protein, carbohydrate, um, fat, you get the same lifespan. Yeah. But what gives you lifespan extension is giving the mice those foods only in a short period. Yes. Yeah. The rest is hungry. Yeah. So if you believe those experiments will, will be true, true for humans, you can eat meat. Just don't eat it all the time. Don't have meat in every meal. What do I do? I tend to a little bit of meat when I, I've been exercising because our body does need amino acids to build muscle. Mm-hmm. But on days where I'm not exercising heavily, um, I will actually take my metformin and uh, try to focus on plant foods. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you in the sense that people tend to go to the extremes and you can definitely just avoid all the negative side effects of all these extremes by trying to practice more balance. And like you said, 
just skipping a few meals and uh, restricting some of the protein is, is, is going to just give you most of the results in terms of uh, the uh, longevity. Like you're not going to overstimulate mTOR, but you know, if you are fasting, then you still want to make sure that you get enough of the mTOR and uh, the protein synthesis to maintain your muscle tissue. So in that sense, if you are practicing some form of time restricted eating and fasting, which is like the critical part of the longevity increase, then uh, you don't have to be that kind of neurotic or that afraid of the animal protein because you're already getting most of the like sirtuins and autophagy activation from the fasting. Right. And, and you don't want to keep anything constant. Yeah. The idea of hormesis is to uh, have periods of recovery and growth and then stress, recovery and growth stress. And that's why you know, I'm not always in the sauna. I'm not always in the cold yeah. tub. <laughs> and I'm not always exercising, uh, you've got to change it up and keep your body in a state of high alert. Yeah, that's, that's true.